is the second section in the work power and energy chapter and this is kinetic and potential energy so overlap with physics here you may have done this type of work in your physics lessons so we're going to be looking at kinetic energy and potential energy so let's start with kinetic energy we'll just call it ke kinetic energy so kinetic energy is the energy that an object has because of its um, speed the speed that it's traveling so a greater speed means a greater kinetic energy so kinetic sort of means like moving energy so kinetic energy um, this is the energy of an object based on its speed okay and the formula for that is half m v squared and this is measured in joules then we also have potential energy now potential energy is the energy that an object has uh, based on its height the higher an object has the higher potential energy it has so it's got the potential to sort of fall at a certain distance and to, it's got that like stored up energy in a way so this is the energy of an object based on its height and this is m G H, so we've we've come across that before, haven't we? Yeah, M G H for work done, um, and uh, yeah, same formula, isn't it? Now work done, we've already got a definition for that, haven't we? We've got like force times distance. Another way of um, um, defining it is work done is change in, and it's at the top there changing kinetic energy yeah so if you slow something down or you speed it up energy well work needs to be done to make that happen so if we can work out the changing kinetic energy we can work out the work done to cause that kinetic energy to change so also remember from previous work we've done kinetic energy is force times distance Right, a particle of mass 0.3 kg is moving at a speed 9 meters per second. Calculate its kinetic energy. Right, so kinetic energy Ke is half mv squared. So this is a nice easy one. Um, so half times the mass, whoops, not a third, a half times the mass times the velocity squared. Okay, so let's do that. You can probably do it in your head, can't you? Um, not me. So half times 0 0.3 times 9 squared. I know that one, 81. 243 over 20. So I'll get 12.15, and it's joules, remember. So 12.15 joules. So that's the kinetic energy it has because of its speed. And the mass is also important. It forms part of the formula for kinetic energy. A box of mass 1.5 kg is pulled across a smooth horizontal surface by a horizontal force. The initial speed of the box is u and its final speed is 3. The work done by the force is 1.8 joules. Calculate the value of u. So I'm just going to draw a diagram. My smooth horizontal surface a box of mass 1.5 kg and i'm going to put the speed it was traveling here and the speed it it start it was traveling over here so u was its initial speed um, v was its final speed and work done is 1.8 joules now work done equals change in kinetic energy right so we use the kinetic energy after minus the kinetic energy before okay so the kinetic energy after um, is half m v squared 
which is 3 squared, minus the kinetic energy before. So this will give us the change in kinetic energy, half times 1.5 times u squared equals the, the work done, which is 1.8 joules. Right, so let's work this out. So uh, half times 1.5 times 3 squared, that's 6.75, this bit here. So I've got 6.75 minus how much u? So 0.75 u squared equals 1.8. So that's just a matter of rearranging. So I've got uh, 0.75 u squared equals 6.75 minus 1.8. Um, so u is going to be equal the square root of that 6.75 minus 1.8 divided by 0 0.75. So that's the square root of all of that. So what do we get for u? And that gives 2.56904. So that would be three significant figures, 2.57. So this was the initial speed and I've given that to three significant figures. A van of mass 2000 kilograms starts from rest at some traffic lights. After traveling 400 meters, the van speed is 12 meters per second. A constant resistance of 500 newtons acts on the van. Calculate the driving force, which can be assumed to be constant. So what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna draw a van. I'm just gonna draw a box. And this will be its mass here. We have this driving force, which I'm going to call F. We have this resistive force of 500 newtons here. It started at rest, so uh, U is zero. It got to a speed of 12 meters per second, and it traveled a distance of 400 meters. Now we can use our definition for work done. Now work done is half uh, or change, let's write it down as that, change in kinetic energy, change in Ke, and it's also equal to force times distance, yeah? Now in this case, F doesn't equal 500, otherwise the van wouldn't move F has got to be greater than 500. So this pulling force, we need to take away the 500 because the 500 is the resistive force. So basically, whatever we work out, we, we need to add on 500 to our answer, which sort of makes sense. This pulling force has got to be 500 plus whatever uh, uh, force we work out that to be. So F minus 500 times by, so this is going to be like a, almost like resultant force in a way. So in this question, the pulling force becomes the resultant force. So that resultant force, F minus 500 times by D. So, and that's going to be 400 meters equals the change in kinetic energy. So we're, we're working out work done here. So this is work done over this side and on the other side we're going to have work done which is changing Ke. So that's half mv squared, so half times 2000 times 12 squared minus half mu squared, so half times 2000 times zero squared. Okay, so both sides are, are work done. Um, so um, F minus 500 is going to equal uh, what I get over here, now this bit's going to be zero. So half times 2,000 is 1,000. 1,000 times 144. Not sure why I'm doing it using a calculator. 144, 14,000, no, 144,000. So all of this becomes 144,000. So 144,000 divided by 400. Okay, so F is going to be 144,000 
divided by 400 plus 500. So what does that give us for F? 144000 divided by 400 plus 500. 860. So the driving force is 860 newtons. A load of bricks. Is that a load of bricks or a load of bricks? A load of bricks, a total mass 30 kg, is lowered vertically to the ground through a distance of 15 meters. Find a loss in potential energy. Now remember, potential energy is based on the height of an object, how much potential it's got, and that's mgh, which is also equal to work done, isn't it? Yeah. When you um, when you lift an object, so maybe there's some link between the work done and potential energy. Yeah. I'll maybe talk about that later. Right. So mass of 30 kg. So the weight of that is going to be 30 g. And it's lowered, and it's lowered by 15 meters. So um, I think on the very first side, it said something about choosing a point of zero potential energy. So normally we would choose maybe the ground. It all depends on the question, but we're going to choose the point where it starts here as zero potential energy. Yeah, so that that's clear uh, so we now just do mgh so mgh is going to equal 30 g times 15 okay so that's going to give you 450 g in joules like that that's the loss in potential energy so you could give it as a negative but it's a loss anyway and 450 times 9.8 gives me 4410 um, joules. So, or 4410 joules. So there's our loss in potential energy. A particle of mass 3 kg is pulled up 10 meters up the plane of a uh, inclined at an angle of theta to the horizontal. So let's draw this as we go along. So the angle is theta. And the mass of this is 3 kg. And it's pulled up 10 meters. OK, so we've got that so far. Uh, where the tan of the angle, so tan theta, equals three quarters. Assuming the particle moves up the line of greatest slope, which basically means it just moves up the slope like that. It doesn't sort of lift off the slope or sort of go into the slope or anything like that. Calculate the potential energy gained uh, by the particle. Now there's a little trick we can use here. Um, again, I'll put a link um, to the video which um, will help you with that. And that is, we're not gonna do the tan inverse of this to find the angle. What we're going to do is work out what the sine of the angle is and the cos of the angle in case we need either of those. So the way we do that is we draw a right angle triangle, we call an angle theta, and uh, tan is defined as the opposite over the adjacent. So you may recognize that triangle, which means that this side is 5. Now, from that, we can just read off what sine theta and cos theta are. Now, sine theta is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's three fifths exact value. And cos is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is going to be four fifths. So if we need sine theta or cos theta, we've got the exact values there. Now, this object, we need to know what vertical height it's gone up. So we know it's gone 10 meters this way. We know that this is an angle of theta. The vertical height it's gone up is that there. And that is going to be 10 sine theta. Now we've worked out sine theta. So it's just 10 times 3 fifths. 
and 10 times 3 fifths is 30 over 5, which is 6. So actually it's moved up by 6 meters. So I'm now ready to work out the gain in potential energy. So that's just going to be um, MGH again. So that's going to be M3G, which is GH, which is 6. So 18G joules, or if we want to leave it as a decimal, 18 times G, 18 times 9.8, and we get 176.4 joules. So 176.4 joules. Now notice that this question in the previous one talked about a, the, the previous one said a loss in potential energy. This one says a gain in potential energy. Sometimes you need to work out whether the potential energy has been lost or gained. That's for you to work out. But in these particular questions, they say, right, it's a gain. It's a loss. And depending on the question, if it's a gain, you'll, you'll use a positive in your working. If it's a loss, you'll use a negative in your working. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 2B on pages 2, 2, which is 22, to 2, 3, which is 23.